This is a classic fan speed controller from eBay. Probably works like a standard dimmer, I would expect, but when I connected it in series with a tungsten load, just a lamp, it did not dim. It clicks, it turns, but nothing happened at all. Let's explore and see if we can work out what went wrong. So for a start, let's get the faceplate off. I have to you pull the knob off first, that will that will help. Where's a screwdriver? Um can I clip this off non-destructively? Yes, I can. So off comes the faceplate, the module. These usually pop out, these modules. Let's try gently prising that down like that. Ugh. Scrunching plastic imminent. Oh, it's out. That's good. Right, let's get these out of the way. And let's pop the module open. It's got some clips at the side. Is this going to come out or do I have to take the screws out? I shall try taking it out first and if it doesn't pop out... Oh no, it just comes out. It just comes out. The first thing I'm seeing is a reflection off here. Is that a broken track? Oh, that is a broken track. That's probably what the problem was. Okay. I'll tell you what, let's continue reverse engineering it. And we'll take a look at the circuitry. So I can see a diac here. I shall unscrew this. And I shall take the module out. That way we are free of this grey piece of plastic. Now we can take a closer look at it. These often just work like a normal dimmer. Uh, and as in many of the imported grey market products, there's no suppression, no sort of uh, inductor and capacitor required for radio interference suppression. I suppose if it's a fan, the inductance of the fan may limit that to a degree, I'm not really sure. So there's a potentiometer with its switch. Uh, there's what is probably a track, the diac in line with that, the timing capacitor, and then just a smattering of resistors uh, around this potentiometer for the actual control of the speed. Right, tell you what, I'm just going to take a picture of this and we'll take a closer look at it. One moment, please. Okay, let's explore. This is the back of the circuit board. There is the crack that was in the, the track. That's not uncommon. When you've got large components like potentiometers, if they're not seated down fully onto a circuit board, there's a risk that any pressure against it will break that solder connection. It's really common with big components, particularly when things are dropped in shipping. It used to be a major thing uh, in older television sets with uh, heavy transformers that if they got dropped, it would break the solder joints. Easy fix, all I did was put a, a wire link uh, between the two broken parts to provide a flexible, movable uh, joint. So this effect, this actually goes in line with uh, the load. The neutral will go directly to the road, the line will come in here and then the load will be connected to here. And uh, the switch switches of power, interesting to note, these tracks here are to the triac and they're beefed up with solder but then it goes through the switch to the output terminal and nothing is beefed up with solder here. In fact, this is probably the thinnest part of the track. So that's the bit that will blow when there's a short circuit because there is no fuse in this. There's no uh, suppression components in that either. It's quite odd. There's a couple of uh, positions down here that look as though they're for a snubber network. The circuit board has a little diac on it which uh, feeds up to the base of the at the gate of the uh, triac, and then there's a timing circuit based on some discrete resistance, which resistors which are all tucked under here, and a timing capacitor. Let's just cut straight to the schematic because that's going to make it a lot clearer. Because uh, you can't really tell too much from that circuit board. So I shall zoom in on this a little bit. So here's how it works. The triac is connected directly across load and live so that uh, when it switches on, it shorts live to the load, which then powers the load, which is getting its neutral from the elsewhere. So say for instance, if this is neutral, and say we just actually powered a lamp, a tungsten lamp, it would be hooked up like that. So to turn the triac on, we have a diac. A diac is an interesting little component. It is a voltage threshold device, but it's bi-directional. 
And on each half of the sine wave, this capacitor here charges up via these resistors until it reaches 30 volts. When it reaches 30 volts, this diac suddenly turns on and it clamps on and discharges this capacitor into the gate of the triac and that turns it on and brings the load on. So if I was to show you, say for instance, if, if I was to draw a bit of a sine wave, sine wave, what actually happens if you set it to half intensity or half speed in the case of the fan, uh, and it's coming on roughly in the middle of the uh, of each half of the sine wave. On each half, these resistors pass current to charge the capacitor, and the position of the potentiometer determines how fast it charges before it triggers. It's interesting to note that there's a 680k resistor in parallel with a 500k potentiometer, which is very reminiscent of lighting circuits to make it so it's not a linear response. It gives it a very weird logarithmic type response. And this uh, 8.2K resistor, 8,200 ohm resistor, is to set the absolute maximum speed this capacitor can charge up if that potentiometer is put right over to the full scale, so to speak. So what happens is it charges up, the uh, diac triggers, tri triggers the triac, and the triacs, by their very nature, latch on. They don't turn back off again until it reaches the zero crossing point. As soon as the current flowing through them goes to zero, they should normally turn off. Then the polarity swaps to the other half of the sine wave, and it does the same again. There's usually a slight difference in symmetry, but more or less the same position, it'll turn on again and it'll uh, stay on for that part of the sine wave. So it just basically turns on for 50% of the time. And that is it. The snubber network was actually, if that's what it was, could have been a couple of things, but a capacitor and a resistor, 100 ohm, 100 nano, very common. Uh, they make the operation of the track more stable uh, with inductive loads um, by sort of suppressing sort of high-speed uh, switching transients that can cause the track to turn on unexpectedly. Uh, that is it. It's super simple, isn't it, right? Tell you what, I shall put this back together and I shall find a load, a suitable load for it, uh, that's interesting. Then we'll power it up and see if it works. One moment, please. Let's test this. Here's the setup. I have the Cliff Quick Test for providing temporary power. And the live from it is going to the fan controller and then to the socket, a standard British socket. The neutral from the power supply goes straight to the socket, so this is basically just breaking into the live. The socket has a lamp plugged into it, and when I turn the power on here, let's make sure this is off first. Turn the power on, noting that there are live connections under here. When I turn it on, it initially lights the lamp at full brightness, and then as you turn it up, it actually turns the lamp down. The reason for that is it's because it's a fan controller as opposed to a lighting dimmer, it's designed to start the fan at full speed to give it a good head start, to give it a bump to actually start it spinning. Sometimes uh, if you uh, start fans when they're at a low setting, they just, they'll just they just sit there and hum and not rotate. Um, so I'm not sure how compatible this would be with all fans. With standard basic ceiling fans, it should be okay. But there is no radio interference suppression on it. Uh, maybe the inductance of the fan itself would help there. But this is probably quite... A popular thing in China, I would guess, their fans. That's really probably the market it's designed for. But there we go. A very standard, simple circuit based on a dimmer um, that uh, is just being used in this case to phase angle control a fan motor. Very, very simple and straightforward.